Oh yeah. Welcome back guys, this is Aaron again from UA Visuals. This video is the second part of real estate drone photography. If you haven't already seen it, jump onto the first video where we take you through the actual execution of how to shoot for real estate, the production stage, gear, types of shots needed, and so on. Now in this video, I'm gonna take you through the post-processing part using Lightroom and Photoshop. So there's four parts to it. The first one is the assembly, really important. Second is color correcting and making minor enhancements to the images in Lightroom. Then the third part is Photoshop work. So we're gonna add in annotations, markers, um, boundary lines, all that kind of fun stuff. And then we're gonna export. So we're gonna export for high res print and we're also gonna export for web. Stay with me, let's whiz through it. Any questions, drop it in the comments part. Otherwise, let's do it. All right guys, the very first thing you need to do is make sure your assembly and sorting gets done nice and quickly. Don't skip over this process. Assembly is super important. It'll help you speed up your processes down the track and just keeping everything organized and in a good structure really, really helps. So you're gonna move all the images into your images folder, all your rushes or videos into your rushes folder. Open up Lightroom, get rid of the videos. You don't need that for the moment. Hit export and away we go. Okay, so the first part, you're gonna have a crap load of images. First stage is just sorting through it. So you're gonna use the P or the X. P stands for pick. As soon as you press P, a little flag comes up on the images. This is basically your shortlisting process. So you're gonna go through all the images nice and quick and pick the ones that you want to use. The really good shots, the ones that are in focus, good composition, nice lighting. The ones that are really, really bad and you're 100% sure that you're gonna reject it, then you select X. Keep going all the way through those images until you get through it all. Alrighty, so the next step is the color correction process. This is where the magic happens. In this step, you're just gonna go through each of the adjustments on the right, work your way down, and you're just making just subtle improvements to the image, you're not going over the top. In terms of subtle corrections, we're talking about lifting the shadows, dropping the highlights, um, you're playing with the curves. Um, there's one thing that always gets overlooked and which is quite important is the sharpness. So what this is, when you go down to the sharpening section, you're gonna hold down option and move the dial to the right. Now what you'll see is the whole image goes white and then you can slowly see a little bit of black that comes through. Basically what this is, is everything in the white is going to be sharp, but you don't want that because there's some bits in there like grass or the roads or the sky is gonna be overly sharp. You don't want that, you just want the outlines so like in the palm trees or the edges of the roofs and things like that. Um, that's where the whole image kind of really stands out when there's certain parts that are isolated and the isolated parts are nice and crisp and sharp. Okay, keep going down. You might want to adjust some uh, your profile correction depending on what kind of drone you use. The Mavic 2 Pro can be a little bit funny, so um, just in terms of warping around the edges. So I like to tick the profile correction or just manually adjust it. Okay, so once you do that, you're gonna to head to the oblique shots that you took and basically start from the top. So here I'm just gonna add in a graduated filter to the top, the part of the sky is a little bit hazy. So I'm gonna drop the highlights down a tad so we have a little bit of blue in the sky. So I'm gonna use the graduated filter again and I'm gonna make the ground or the land part nice and bright. I'm gonna make that punch out or stand out a little bit more. Also I'm gonna make the roads a little bit brighter, the sand and on the beach. Just adding a little bit of extra brightness to it. And you can see the before and after already makes such a big difference. Now, another cool little touch is if you're shooting any properties along the beach, use that graduated filter again and add a little bit of color to it. I like to add a bit of teal or turquoise. This really makes the water pop out and gives you that kind of Maldives, I don't know, Bora Bora style um, resort look. Don't overdo it. It's not for Instagram. This is to sell a property. Now the other thing is uh, the city, we want to make the city stand out a little bit. So we're going to darken this skyline. 
adding the brush tool and just darkening it just a tad there. So you can see a little bit of a silhouette or the, the skyline pop out a bit better. All right, next up, we're gonna to go to the annotations. I'm gonna show you how to create these boundary lines and markers. So what you need to do, nice and simple, you're gonna right click on the image and you're gonna open it in Photoshop. Once that opens up, you're gonna go down to the left and select the pen tool, grab the pen tool, adjust the size and the stroke. In this case, we're gonna make a, a white stroke around the property, nice and small, not too thick. All you're gonna do is draw that boundary around the lot and away you go, that's it, nice and simple. The next step is where you can really make the image pop and stand out, adding black and white to the outside of the property whilst keeping the property in color. Well, you're gonna use the select tool, select the boundary first, then you're gonna go up to the menu, hit select and inverse. And also don't forget to plug your power in. Then to the right, you're gonna look for the hue and saturation button, click that, and you're gonna drop the saturation all the way down. As you can see, what happens is it removes all the color from the parts that are selected, leaving your property nice and colorful. So that's it. Then you're gonna go through all your images. You can do the exact same thing, rinse and repeat. Now don't forget to clone yourself out. This is another good reason why you should shoot from the back of the property. If you were shooting on the road and there were maybe um, road markers and so on, that would be a little bit more difficult, but in the grass, nice and easy. Okay, the next point in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you the annotation part. Dropping in the pins, um, writing where all these different point of interests are, where the city is, the schools, etc. First thing you do, select the text tool and do your first one, which is Melbourne. Now the arrow or the star that I like to use is made up of two things. So first one is a, a simple line followed by a circle. And that circle just lives underneath that line like a little round dot. I think this looks kind of minimal and clean. After you do that, the layers on the right, you're gonna select that and right click and link it. Once they're linked, then you're, then it's super easy to move around and replicate around the rest of the image. Talking about replicating, the next step, copy and paste. So we're rinsing and repeating, copying what you've just done, pasting it all around the different point of interest on your site and obviously going back and changing the text out. So you're gonna add the school, you're gonna add the point of interest, the beach, the boxes, etc. Once you hit save in Photoshop, in Lightroom, it's gonna save those changes into your catalog. So you can go back into Lightroom and export out of that. All right, now we get to our export stage. This is really important. Now, depending on your client, uh, generally, I like to export two different types. The first one is for web, and then the second one is print. Go up to the top, hit export, and then we're gonna work our way down, choose the folder of where you wanna export the images to, then you're gonna rename it, make sure you have your business name in there somewhere, and also web or print. So we're gonna add, change the quality to around 65 to 70. Go down and change the long edge to 2000 pixels. Then DPI, set that to 72. There's no point going higher than that because everything online is 72. Um, then I uncheck the sharpen part. All right, so exporting for print, exactly the same. Go from the top, we're gonna to change the file path to the print folder. The name of the file, we're gonna remove web and add in print. Scroll down to your long edge. Now we're gonna uncheck the long edge, which means we're gonna use the full amount of pixels and, and also we're gonna crank up the DPI to 300. 300 is always print quality and that's it we're going to export. Now once we've done this, you should have all your images in two separate folders, one for web and one for print. Okay guys, that's it. I hope it's helped. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit subscribe. There'll be plenty of other cool drone stuff coming up. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.